Hello and welcome back to Economics A-Level on YouTube. Today we're going to look at PPF's Production Possibility Frontiers. So in the last video we looked at Choice and Opportunity Cost. If you want to go back and revisit that, just refresh yourselves, do click on that link now. But the objective of this video is that we're going to build on those concepts of choice and opportunity cost and apply them graphically to production possibility frontiers. And we will look at full and not full or unemployed use of factors of production or our resources on this PPF. We're going to look at areas that are impossible and we'll talk through the shape of the PPF and what that means as well. Growth, as represented on PPFs, will be shown in the next video and you can click on the link at the bottom if you want to jump straight to that one. So we first of all got to start by defining what a PPF is because that will tell us what it does. So in economics we say that PPFs measure the maximum possible combination of two goods or services from a given number of inputs, which we said were factors of production last time, and we assume that all resources are fully and efficiently employed. So just to rewrite that so it's all in one sentence, then PPF show the maximum possible combination of two goods or services from a given quantity of factory inputs, given that all resources are fully and efficiently employed. So there's kind of four things we want to be thinking about when we're thinking about what the PPF actually is and shows. So just very quickly, you'll see PPFs written as production possibility boundaries sometimes, or PPBs, or PPCs, which is production possibility curves, and sometimes also called transformation curves. This is a PPF, this is what it looks like, and we are assuming that there are only two goods that we can produce with the given quantity of resources that we've got. So let's say we've got a pile of wood and we can make chairs or tables out of it. We have made a choice initially to begin operating at point A, and this choice of production has allowed us to make 310 chairs, according to this graph, and 95 tables. So that's what our choice has allowed us to do. We can possibly make a maximum of 425 chairs if we make zero tables, and we can make 130 tables if we make zero chairs. So they are our maxima, but we have chosen to operate at point A, which gives us some of both. So now let's say we make a choice to move to point B. This is where opportunity cost is now shown because by moving from point A to point B, we have gained, as you can see from the bottom axis, 95 to 120 tables. So we've gained 25 tables, but we have foregone the next best alternative. And the next best alternative in this case is to produce chairs. And we've given up or foregone 135 chairs to do so. So we've gone from 310 to 175 chairs, which is a loss of 135 chairs in order to gain those extra tables. So this is how then a PPF shows choice and opportunity cost in operation. If we then decided that we wanted to move from point B to producing only tables, so basically we move from point B to the point at the very bottom of the PPF on the tables axis to produce 130 tables, we gain 10 tables but we give up 175 chairs because we move from point B, which is 175 chairs, to zero chairs in order to produce the extra 10 tables we want. So there, there again, we see opportunity cost in operation. We now need to look at some of the areas within the PPF and outside of the PPF. But first of all, let's just say initially we produce 350 guitars. Some exam boards will ask you, well, what is the opportunity cost of choosing to produce 350 guitars? And we're assuming that's like an initial position. So we've not moved from E to that point, for example. We just said, well, what is the opportunity cost of producing 350 guitars? And the opportunity cost is the next best alternative. And in this case, the next best alternative would be to devote all of the country's resources to producing cellos in this case. The opportunity cost of producing 350 guitars is going to be 28 cellos. We now need to look at those points within the PPF, all labelled U. Now, all of these points are points of unemployed resources. So U, U1 and U2 show different quantities of unemployed resources. Basically, though, and I mean, this should be obvious from looking at it, but the closer in towards the PPF curve you get, the fewer unemployed resources you have. And you can see that because, for example, if you take U and U2, you can see that we're only producing 130 uh, guitars and two cellos at U. But at U2, we're producing 177 guitars with 15 cellos. So we can see that as we've moved closer towards the PPF line, then we have fewer unemployed 
resources. Of course, being on the line shows that there are no unemployed resources because the PPF curve itself shows a maximum. So if you're on the line, because we define the PPF as showing the maximum possible combination, then that means that we have used all of our resources to produce the maximum that we can out of the given number of inputs. So let's say we wanted to move to point Z. Is this a realistic possibility for this economy? And the answer is no, based upon what we've just said. We've just said that the line of the PPF is the maximum possible. So therefore, anything beyond that line in open space like Z is, is unattainable or impossible because we've only got a certain number of resources and there's only a certain maximum that we can produce with those resources. Growth, we will look at in the next video, and that will involve shifting that PPF curve outwards. So Z could be possible, but only with an increase in that PPF line to the point of Z. As things currently stand, Z is not possible. U2 to E is an interesting example on this PPF as well, because it shows that we can move from somewhere within the PPF to somewhere on the line and not have to sacrifice production of one good for another good. So you can see at U2, we've, we were producing 177 guitars with 15 cellos, but at point E, we have more of both, 255 guitars and 17 cellos. So that is an, an example, a rare example on a PPF where there is no opportunity cost in production because we're getting more of both. If we'd chosen to move somewhere below 177 guitars, which would get, get us more than 17 cellos along that line, then there would be some opportunity cost. But there is a certain zone on that PPF line, if you're moving from within, where there isn't an opportunity cost involved. Okay, we need to quickly look at what efficiency is in relation to the PPFs, because exam boards will ask you about this. There's two types of efficiency that we're going to look at. We're going to look firstly at productive efficiency, and anywhere on that PPF curve is productively efficient. So productive efficiency takes place where production occurs at the lowest possible cost, and we need to have a condition of technical efficiency for productive efficiency to exist as well, which is out of a given number of inputs, you produce the maximum output from them. And PPF curve showing the maximum possible combination of goods demonstrates that type of efficiency. So any point on the line, ZQ, ETS is productively efficient. We're also concerned with something called Pareto efficiency after The Economist Vilfredo Pareto. And what this shows is that we can't get more of one good when we're on the PPF curve itself. So any of those points, ZQ, ETS. So we can't have more of one of those goods if we're operating at any of, anywhere on the, along that PPF line without giving up or sacrificing some of another good. So for example, let's say we wanted to move from E to Q to get more cellos you can see that if we do so, we move downwards on the guitar axis and have fewer guitars. And the same if we wanted to move from T to S to gain more guitars, then we have to give up a certain number of cellos. Anywhere along that line then is a Pareto optimal outcome, Pareto efficient, and is also productively efficient. And any of those points within inside that PPF boundary are Pareto and productively inefficient. Please note, though, that the PPF doesn't demonstrate allocative efficiency because allocative efficiency is concerned with producing the quantity of goods and services that maximise consumer utility or satisfy consumer demand. And we can't say which of those points, ZQ, ETL or S, in an economy are going to maximise consumer utility or satisfy all of consumer demand. They're just points along a PPF. So we don't know which of those shows the allocatively efficient level of production. We need to talk about the shape of the PPF as well, because as you can see, it's concave, i.e. it bows outwards. And the reason for this is because it demonstrates what we say is increasing opportunity costs. So if, for example, we start at one point on the PPF, if we want to keep increasing the number of tables produced each time, we have to give up a greater quantity of chairs. So you can see this from A to B, we gave up 135 chairs in order to gain 25 tables. Now, if we move from B to C, we have to give up a greater quantity of chairs. We give up 175 chairs in order to gain 10 extra tables. You can see from that that there's an increased opportunity cost as we move down the PPF because of the concave shape. We've got to ask why this is, though. And there's two concepts we're now going to look at. Firstly is the concept of diminishing marginal returns. The word marginal here refers to extra or the next unit of production. 
So what we're talking about here is if we moved from A to B, that's a marginal point because we've moved from one point of production to another and then from B to C the same. So we've said that A to B and B to C give us different increases in the number of tables. If we move from A to B, we gain 25 tables. If we move from B to C, we gain 10 tables. You can see that the gain in tables has reduced the further down the production possibility curve we move. We have to ask ourselves why this is. And if you think about an economy, it's got a given quantity of factors of production. And some of those factors of production are better suited to producing certain types of goods than others. So if our initial factors of production were divided at point A, where we had the people producing the 310 chairs who were very, very much suited to it, and the people producing the 95 tables who were less suited to chair production and better suited to table production, when we move towards point B, we have to give up some of those factors of production that are producing chairs and reallocate them to tables. And so some of the people who are better suited at producing chairs are now having to produce tables according to this PPF. And they're not just people that we're talking about, it's a world to talk about factors of production such as land and capital. And so some factors of production therefore are better suited to producing some things rather than others. So once they're switched into the other, they're going to be less productive, less efficient at production. And therefore, this is what diminishing marginal returns is the returns gained from production start to fall as our factors of production run out and as we reach capacity. A very much related con concept is that of increasing marginal cost. Now this is also demonstrated by this PPF curve. So A to B, we gave up 135 chairs. B to C, we've given up 175 chairs. There's a greater cost, a marginal cost, in swapping from each of those points of production. And the reason for that, again, is very much similar to what we just discussed about diminishing marginal returns. By having to swap factors of production from a place where they were better suited to production and therefore could carry out that production at a lower cost because they're more efficient, they are now at one where they are less Less efficient and therefore the marginal cost of that production is higher. So that explains then hopefully why the PPF curve is concave shaped. It's all to do with diminishing marginal returns and increasing marginal cost and of course increasing opportunity cost as we move from point to point along that PPF curve. One final thing is that sometimes you'll encounter straight PPF curves, and this just demonstrates that there's constant opportunity cost. There's no bowing of the curve outwards, and therefore it's a linear relationship. So for example, here, if we started at nine chairs and zero coffins, if we wanted now to start producing some coffins, and we reduced our chair production to eight at point A, we've gained two coffins. And similarly, if we then decided to move to point B, we've given up one chair again and gained two coffins again. So we've moved from two to four coffins. So therefore, this is showing you that there's a constant opportunity cost any point down this straight line PPF. In the next video, we're going to look at growth and production possibility frontiers. So please click on the link if you want to go to that video straight away. If not, click the link at the bottom and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.